Thank you for stopping by Ballistic Barbecue. On this video, I'm gonna be smoking up two racks of beef back ribs on that Yoder YS640. Let's get going. And here are those beef ribs, pretty darn meaty. There are a few little bones just shining through here and there, but that's pretty common on beef back ribs. Now this particular rack, I've already removed the membrane, cleaned up some of the big giant deposits of fat. We're going to do that to this one next. Now, there's already some missing membrane here, which I'm not gonna complain about, but especially on beef ribs, this is a really thick membrane. I like to remove it because it just makes for a kind of a tough bite. And we do this just like we would on a rack of pork ribs. I'm just going to take the butter knife and put it under the membrane there. And I like to get it just open enough to where I can get my little finger in there and then just sort of walk it open, I guess. Then I want to just work that membrane around to where it loosens up, which it has already. And it's not uncommon for this to tear a little bit here and there, like on a rack of pork ribs. Sometimes you get lucky, sometimes you don't. Just again, paper towel. Okay, you want to just kind of pick up the stragglers here. Now you can see these large deposits of fat these aren't going to completely render down, so I just like to trim them down a little bit. I'm not removing all the fat, just thinning it out a little bit. We are ready to move on to the next step. On this cook, I'm going to be using a rub, and whenever I'm cooking beef ribs, I always like to use a binder, whether it's Worcestershire sauce, mustard, mustard with a little pickle, juice, beef broth, it just adds another level of flavor, but it also helps that rub adhere to the meat. And on this particular cook, we're going to use a concoction that I, I was messing around with last week, actually. And it's really, really good. It's definitely worth trying out. So I'm using a toasted porter. And this is from a local brewery out here called Second Chance. And the beer is called Tabula Raza. And this is really good. If you don't have access to a toasted porter like this, a stout like Guinness is, is great. So we'll go ahead and pour this in. You can see how just how rich that is, that really thick, creamy head. Then I have here a quarter cup of Worcestershire sauce. Add that. Get this stirred up. And I'm also going to be using this in my spray bottle to keep those ribs moist when they're on the pit. Pour it in a glass here. We'll get this applied to the ribs here. So again, on this cook, I'm using a rub. Our butts are smoking, our beef rub, this good stuff. Looking good. I'm going to allow this to sweat through a little bit. In the meantime, I'm dragging all this camera and light stuff out in the patio. I'll meet you out at the pit. I have the odor running at 250. We're burning hickory pellets. Let's cook. So obviously on this cook, I went ahead and removed that top rack. Let's go ahead and lay these ribs on. There we go. So in about an hour or so, I'm gonna check on the ribs. If they need a little moisture added, I'm gonna spritz them with some of that porter concoction that I made in the kitchen. Other than that, we're just gonna let them cook. I'm not going to wrap these. I'm going to cook until they have the tenderness I want. And I'm looking at probably four to five hours until they're done. See you in a bit. 
We are in at one hour now. I just took a peek at the ribs and they definitely need a little spritzing. So let's check them out. You see how it's just getting a little dry on the top here on the surface of the ribs. So again, that porter, Worcester sauce. It smells so good. That concoction I made to spritz these ribs with that porter, hitting that diffusion plate and vaporizing up just smells amazing. So I'm really looking forward to eating these ribs. So really that's all I'm going to do now is monitor the ribs. And if they're looking a little dry, I hit them with a little spritz and probably about the, I don't know, four hour mark, I'll start testing for tenderness. See you guys in a bit. Okay, we are just under four hours. I did a tenderness test and these things are probe tender now. I'm going to finish them off with a sauce at this point. So let's check these ribs out. Beautiful color. And just check this, <laughs> watch this. I mean, again, going in, it's a hot probe through butter right here. Beautiful. Now I know some people don't like putting sauce on beef ribs and that's fine. We like it here at my house. And uh, for this cook I'm using, it's firebug grilling sauce. This is mild. And it's just, again, one more layer of flavor. And this stuff is nice and savory. It's, it's really good sauce. First thing I'm gonna do is get the bottom of these guys. Look at that beautiful color. Okay, at this point, we're just going to let that sauce tighten up a little bit on the ribs. Then I'll pull them from the pit and I'll meet you guys in the kitchen after they've rested a little bit and we'll give them a try. Okay, we let these ribs go another 20 minutes and they are ready to be pulled. Look at that. So you can see there's a little bit more pullback on the bones there. I'm going to get these racks off the pit, take them in the house, let them rest a little bit. We'll slice them up and give them a try. See you inside. All right, the ribs have rested. Now it's time for my favorite part. We're gonna try these things out. Well, on the tenderness scale, they're looking good. Get this grub off. Nice and juicy. Nice smoke ring. Those are pretty. Beautiful ribs. Let's give this a try here. Mmm. Well, those are as tender as any ribs I've ever cooked before. Mm. So one thing I'm really, really happy about with this cook is the different layers of flavor. That rub, perfect beef rub, and I'm really happy I made the choice of going with that rub on these ribs. It's, you know, got that salt going on, but then also a little hint of heat and those other spices It'd be great on a brisket, great on a, like a prime rib roast. Then the sauce, again, that sauce is not like a real sweet sauce that you would associate with pork ribs. It's more on the savory side. There is a little hint of sweetness, but again, it's more, more savory and it plays in with beef very well, very well. I'm, I'm stoked about this cook. Again, I've done several cooks now on the Yoder. This is only my second video, but, um, that thing is a dream to cook on. I mean, it, it is awesome. And the food it produces, it's, I mean, it's like a stick burner, you know? The way that thing behaves is more like cooking on a stick burner than any pellet grill I've ever cooked on, ever. Anyway, let's have a beer. So a buddy 
and a subscriber of mine sent me a couple of these beer glasses. I'm sure he wouldn't want me to mention his name, but initials WC. So I'm gonna honor him by using this glass in this video here, and it would be wrong of me not to use Second Chances Tabula Raza beer that I used in that spritz, and uh, it's a binder. It's getting a toasted porter, award-winning porter here. This stuff is awesome. So let's give this a pour. Nice. Such a good beer and hopefully you're not mad at me for using it in a recipe, but it's, uh, it's worthy of this. Cheers, folks. Very good. Has kind of a coffee thing going on there. Good beer. Anyway, thanks again for stopping by. Keep those requests coming in. I'll see you in the next video. Cheers again. Darn, I have to drink this beer again. Cheers.